Pumps Notes presents a review of the Robert Hyde incident at Heartland Park, Topeka. Check the right side of your screen right before the finish line has a cylinder go out and then a big explosion. Then the car right now, Robert can't see. He just wants to get this thing stopped. It makes a hard right turn into that right hand wall. Back over the left hand wall. He's trying to, he's on the brakes trying to. Right here, as you see it spinning the tires right before the finish line, it mixes a cylinder. Go Robert Height, remember after this fire, they have to keep the same chassis. They can change everything else, which is pretty much what they're doing right now. And. And Robert Height's car was just pulled out from under the tent. He's the first one out and ready to go to the lanes. Boy, this is uh, pretty amazing. I mean, a lot of times they'll give you a few minutes. Most And Jim Hibb, I'm sure, would probably just wait if it's just going to be a few minutes. They didn't get a chance, it looks like, to warm up the race car. But sometimes that doesn't matter. I've done that before, gone up there, and the car's gone right down the racetrack. In fact, that's exactly what I was going to say, Michael. One thing they didn't get a chance to do is even turn this car over to see if it is going to fire. The man, and from, you know, from Robert Tite's standpoint, it's just like we talked about. You do whatever Jimmy Pock says. If it's safe to go to the finish line, it's not. Jimmy Pock will tell him, though, if there's something wrong with it, just go up and stage a car and hope something happens to the competition that you get around and you have a chance to come back and work on it a little bit more. We won't know what the, I don't think Jimmy Proc would ever tell us before the run. He may play, you know, tell us what's uh, going on after the run and we'll just have to see how it all plays out. What an amazing crew it is, though, to get that car from a charred hulk back to a competition machine ready to run 330 plus miles an hour. You know, they'll be checking for leaks, trying to make sure there are no leaks going up there. Because like we said, it, and there, there is a leak. Yeah. So they would get shut off anyway. They won't, they won't even get the opportunity to just go up there and stage the car and hope something happens to Jim. Well, I'm a little bit upset here. And, and Jimmy Brock is a little upset at the situation. You have a situation where you spend 75 minutes getting a car, stripping a, a perfectly good car that you could race. I know it's a rule to put all those pieces on a car and go up there to race. And then, you have, then I have to tell these kids that busted their butts, you're not going to run. But John Medlin said to me, are you crazy? Even if that car looked perfect, why would you want to run that car after what's happened with us? And Medlin said, that is crazy. And John Medlin gave me another wake-up call. I got caught in the heat of battle. Stupid here is that you don't take chances in this sport, not even to win. And Medlin said, put it away. Jimmy agreed. It ain't right. We brought it up here for the TV to give the fans a show, to show them that we could come back, that we could get a car done in that 75-minute rule. But we need to take a look at the rule that's out there that you can't run a good car because every time somebody crashes, that car could be hurt. Either make everybody go home with a car with a bent fender or let you put one back in the game. Now, that might not be unfair to the guy that owns one car, so I don't know how to make the rules. It's just very frustrating to all of us today. And there was a lot of between Coyle, Bernie, Mellon, all of them, everybody was on the tire for the first time. And I don't like that in my camp. But they all agreed. They all agreed right there on the start line, safety. We didn't even want to do a burnout. Safety. Stop right there. Enough said.